Assalamu alaikum and konnichiwa. Thank you for joining today's episode of Economy Speaking with me, Azalia. And in today's episode, we will be talking about PhD in Japan, third year. Or basically what I've been doing in the past couple of months, considering that I have another eight months as a PhD candidate here in Japan. When you're in your third year of PhD, the main idea that comes to your mind is of course writing your dissertation and submitting it. But to be honest, actually there's a lot more paperwork to be done um, when you're in your third year because um, it's about submitting it to committees and whatnot. Before we move on to any of that, I'm very happy to report that I have successfully finished writing my very first draft of my dissertation. Um, very, very rough draft, but I'm very happy to have been able to finish it by end of June. So that means I have um, the next couple of months to really edit and like, as you can see, I'm already <laughs> editing a lot and yeah, editing is definitely harder than writing. So I'm gonna focus the next two months on editing this to make it better and just a solid dissertation. Other than writing your dissertation, um, actually we got this list. Um, this is basically all the checklists that you, all the things that you need to fulfill in the third year of your uh, candidacy in order for you to successfully graduate with a PhD um, in Japan, at least in my university. So as you can see, I've made up all these little checkbox um, to show how far I've come. And yeah, we've only, we've, we're only at the second one, but it's still good. So last month in May, I had my second presentation, Dainiji Hapyo. Um, which is basically a presentation in front of the whole uh, committee, not, not the committee, in front of all the senseis in your faculty and they will basically give advice and comment on your dissertation uh, progress. Um, then just end of this week, my supervisor has submitted my Rombung Daimokotodoke, which is my um, PhD committee, the formation, the, the name of the senseis that will be on my PhD committee, as well as a paper that, uh, not a paper, as well as a form that has officially stated that I have passed the requirement to move on to the preliminary examination, which is submitting to a uh, Japanese, the JSPS recognized journal, and also the uh, having done my second presentation. So now that this thing has been submitted and the committee has been formed, um, I have been given the green light to be able to submit my um, dissertation for a preliminary examination in September. Yes, that's, that's the third one that's upcoming. <laughs> it's on the 23rd of September. Next. So that's why I said I have now it's end of June, we have July and August and well basically the whole of September but I'm hoping to give uh, the draft, at least a third or fourth draft to my supervisor by that September so he can just have a look at it. What happens during a preliminary examination is the comedy, you will have to, as it's stated right here actually, you have to, you have to print out like six copies of your dissertation, submit it to each committee member committee members will have roughly two months to go over them and then you will have a session with them and they will go over it and we will see if I am ready to go to Honshinsa or the uh, you know the real examination so third year has been as you can see mainly the bulk of it has been writing the thesis but at the same time my supervisor has reminded me to not slack off on writing new papers and publications so aside from doing this I'm also writing two different papers and I hope to get them submitted and inshallah published I mean by the end of 2020 so um, yeah a lot of writing but it does I would have to say once you reached a uh, third year and um, once you've at least gotten one publication published in a Japanese uh, JSPS recognized journal, you do feel a sense of calm and you know, you're not too worried. But of course, there's always the defense to be worried about. But you know, it's kind of like, you know, um, you, you're slowly evolving from uh, 
in first year when you say like you're not really sure what you're doing you're not really sure what direction you're taking but by the time you've written this whole dissertation of yours you really have a clear idea of hey you know what this is what my research is about this is what I'm good at and this is what I think I know what I'm talking about yeah and I'd like to point out that this is the 20th episode of I Can Be Speaking and I'd just like to thank everyone who has been watching this uh, YouTube channel um, because uh, yeah it is it is mainly to document this journey of mine um, and I think uh, in 20 videos you can see some sort of um, uh, character development <laughs> in the sense of going from uh, you know, not accepting rejections, to getting used to rejections, to you know, having that confidence in knowing what you are doing, what you are writing about. Alright, so that's my check-in for third year of PhD um, with another eight months to go. Inshallah, I hope that everything will proceed as planned without any hiccups. Although, um, yeah, there might be some hiccups here and there, but you know, either way, we have to get through it. <laughs> I hope you all are doing well in this pandemic season. I also like to take this chance to talk a little bit about PhD productivity in the time of pandemic, in the time of this pandemic, especially on Twitter. Uh, if you follow Academic Chatter or Academic Twitter, you'll see um, a lot of people, a lot of academics just sharing how difficult it is to be productive at a time like this, especially when you're trying to finish your dissertation and then there's a pandemic and then there's anxiety, there's imposter syndrome, there's a lot of mental issues going on inside your head. So it's easy for you to feel overwhelmed and just like ah, ah. me I did feel that in the beginning of when the pandemic first started because I really didn't feel safe I didn't feel safe um, going to school I didn't feel safe trying to finish my paper or trying to finish my work because I just felt like okay but what if I'm sick okay do your do your paper but what if you get sick and then you know it just it's that thing that comes in over and again and because of that pandemic and that product and you know and then there's everyone saying hey you know you're staying at home you should be more productive now and you do feel a little more pressured in that sense because you feel um oh no yes i'm home all the time i should be writing i should be writing i should be writing which is true but not to the extent that you are facing all this burnout know when to take a break and in fact when um when i actually finished my final chapter chapter six um i was so happy but instead of wanting to take a break the next day i immediately felt like oh my god okay um let's go back into editing you know i just really wanted to immediately go back into editing this thing but you know it wasn't until my mom when i actually she called me and said hey did you finish it and I said yeah i finished my first draft and she told me you should really just take a break and take three days off not look at it and then come back at it with fresh eyes because you've been looking at it for the whole six past six months without a doubt uh without rest sorry so yeah and it, it wasn't until she pointed it out and also my husband asking me to you know just let loose and just forget about it for a little while that i remind that i was reminded that you know that it's okay to take a break it's okay to celebrate your small wins it's okay to just live in the moment and just you know not not think everything is about your phd for a little while so if you have a friend or if you are also an academic who is going through some stressful times during this pandemic and also trying to finish your phd remember to take a breath and also remember to remind another academic member to remind a friend or you can go on twitter there's so many reminders on academic chat to tell you that it's okay to take a break it's okay to not f to rest and not make everything be about research. All right, so that's it for today's video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Do let me know in the comment section anything else that you would like to know about being a PhD candidate here in Japan. I'll also have another next video up soon. Uh, till then, Assalamualaikum.